Hi, my name is George Robb, and what follows is a sketch I wrote wherein I play all the parts. This is called Symphonic Call-In Show. Too sane to be locked up, and too crazy for radio. It's the Mark and Mad Dog Show. Welcome back to WSYM All Symphonic Radio. This is Mark and the Mad Dog Show, weekdays 3 to 6. As always, I'm Mark. I'm the Mad Dog. And, and we, we love, love classical, classical music. music. Da, 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 da. So, uh, how was your weekend, big guy? Oh, I was a bear. Don't get me started. <laughs> All right, then I won't mention the hot wings. What the hell are you talking about? Bok, bok. Yeah, anyway, let's get going. On the line, we got Joe from Crown Heights. What do you know, Joe? Yeah, love the show, Mark. Hey, Mad Dog. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, back at you. So, listen, do you think of Bernie Heitnick's gonna pull off a good season in Chicago this year or what? Hey, don't you be calling out Maestro Heitnick, yow! I don't know, it's just that preseason was kind of weak with Boulez out of the picture as uh, conductor emeritus. Don't you kid yourself, Joey. Heitnick is anything but out and done. Did you hear his Mahler 5 last year? That was ridiculous. Anyone that can pull in an oboe section like that deserves the no, benefit no, of the doubt. No, 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 I totally disagree. Uh-oh, you do? Uh, yeah, look, Heitnick is like any one of those Amsterdam conductors. All show, no blow. Guess what I'm oh, thinking. Oh, you wait, you got guys are completely insane. What about the Mahler? You know, it's just like you to go on to some singular past season glory and trounce that around like it's going to have any influence on this season. There's no way that first chair Robert Chen is going to be able to carry the whole crew again like he did last year. It's just asking too much of any violinist, let alone that guy. You think there's any truth to the rumor that Chen's going to the New York Phil? No, I haven't heard that at all. Well, me neither, but as soon as we do hear anything, you can count on hearing about it at the Mark and Mad Dog Show. Let's go, Steve, line two. Yeah, hi there, boys. Da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. Go! I just heard you talking about Chicago. Do you think it's time Mark Clevenger left? He's been there since 66. Definitely high time to hang up the old horn. Oh, no question. No question. No question. I love the show, guys. All right, moving on. David, line seven. Hey, boys. Da -da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. Go! Yeah, I was wondering what uh, your boy's take is on the Yop von Sweden signing. I liked it, and I find nothing wrong with it. And I don't believe it deserves any type of ridicule for any reason at all. Yeah, good, uh, good comment. I think it was good signing for both sides. He's a fan favorite, a very good conductor, and someone Dallas needs if it wants to improve. And uh, locking him up for three years is a sign that they're ready to invest in the orchestra. Aha, yeah Jimbo, line three, go. You're on the Mark and Mad Dog Show. Hey, boys love the show. Let me pre-qualify this question by mentioning that I'm a seasoned ticket holder for Boston. Now... Don't you think that this level of Keith Lockhart bashing in this town is a bit insane? All the talk shows, the non-music radio shows, everybody up in Boston, they all hate Lockhart and seem to be almost as satisfied by his crappy concert with David Lee Roth as when the uh, Boston Symphony plays the Rite of Spring brilliantly. Is this a dynasty thing? Is it the Sage Yozawa thing? Is it Rosengate? Is it their subscriptions? The record contract? Jealousy? I mean, I understand it, but not to the extent that it exists. Help me explain this. Yeah, listen, I think it's uh, all of the above. Everything you just mentioned is really good. There's no question that Rosengate and David Lee Roth don't endear you to that organization. But uh, make no mistake, a lot of that venom was because the orchestra fans didn't want the pops mentioned in the same breath as the Boston Greats. No question. So wait, you really think it's a jealousy thing? Of course it is. Look at the ticket sales comparatively between Orc and Pops. You kidding me? Yeah, oh, yeah, all right. Benny, uh, line one. Go, you're on with Mark and Mad Dog. Uh, yeah, boys, uh, don't you think Leonard Slatkin has any clout in recruiting? I would think those kids look at him as a bit of a dinosaur. Maybe a lot of them do, but for some, hey, he's still Leonard Slatkin, and like him or not, he'll always be mentioned as one of the greatest conductors in classical music. There's some clout in that. Maybe not as much as there once was, but there's still something there. Yeah, and besides, he's English, and we just love those accents. Oh, grow up, you freak. <laughs> All right, hey, we got time for one more quick one. George, line eight. Yeah, hey, guys, how do you think uh, Robert Spano would have fared against that Korean audience that Mazel had to face a few weeks ago? Oh, geez, yeah. He probably would have puked five times in the first half. Uh, that was a pretty relentless group. Uh, <clears throat> Mazel was in his element, but there's no way that some guys from Atlanta are going to take care and do what the team from New York can do. That kind of pressure can wear on a guy. Spano would have creamed his jeans. Oh, come on. Give the guy some credit. No, man. No offense to our Atlanta listeners, but any organization doing both Rachmaninoff number two and having Debbie Reynolds in the same season, well, uh... Uh, it just ain't there. You're just insane, Mad Dog. Absolutely insane. <laughs> All right, it's the Mark and Mad Dog Show on WSYM. All symphonic talk. We're right back after this.